I get asked by students uh, how to think about writing a scientific report. So they're often very intimidated when they're faced by a blank page. How do you go about starting to think about the structure? So I'm going to run you quickly through one way that I use, that I use in my own work, um, just to get you started, and I hope it's useful. So the first thing we do is we think about the scientific paper as an hourglass. So an hourglass has three main sections. It has the top and the bottom, the introduction and the discussion, and in the middle we have methods and results, which is our bit of work. Um, we think of it as an hourglass because we, we start off thinking very broadly at the beginning of the introduction. At the top here, uh, this narrows down to our particular area of study. Um, we run through the, the narrowest part of the work, which is what we've done specifically. Um, we begin the discussion with a, a, a brief discussion of whatever it is that we've been doing, and we broaden out to consider the wider literature towards the end. Now, hopefully that's, that's useful in and of itself, but I'm, I'm going to give you a few tips about how to structure each of these sections individually uh, as well. So, I tend to think of the introduction as being uh, four sections. Uh, so the first one is the broad background. So there's the joke in evolutionary biology that every evolutionary biology paper begins with ever since Darwin, dot, dot, dot. So ever since Darwin did X, Y, and Z, we have X, Y, and Z. Um, so we start off very, very broad. Uh, the second is uh, the, the past work in this specific area. So what is it that's been done that's relevant to what you're talking about? Um, the third section is the most important, really, and that's identifying a gap in that past work that can be filled by the work that you're doing. So why is it important that you do the work that you're doing, and how does it complement what's been done in the past? And then finally, to finish off the introduction, um, what is it that you're doing specifically? So how is what you're doing going to fill that gap in the literature. So there's, there's four sections for your introduction to get you thinking about that. Um, I tend to have at least one fairly sizable paragraph on each. Um, so that's, that's our introduction. Um, the methods and results, uh, they should follow fairly logically and they'll be very specific to your project. Um, however, something that is worth bearing in mind is that within the methods and results, um, we like to have parallel structure. So if you've got a project of multiple parts, then your first part of your methods should come first, obviously, your second part of your methods, and then however many parts of methods you have. Um, but when you start your results section, you should follow the order of your methods in the presentation of your results. So you should have the, the sections of your results following the order in which you describe the way that you achieved them. So we call that parallel structure, and that's a very easy way, especially if you use subheadings to guide a reader through what you've written. Now, the discussion is perhaps one of the, the toughest sections for uh, an undergraduate student. Uh, so the way to think about how to write this, I think, is to, to consider each of your key findings individually. So we begin with paragraph one. Paragraph one has all key points. Let's see, all key points. Um, what we do from there, let's say we have three key points, is that we have paragraph two is key point one, key point one, paragraph three is key point two, paragraph four is key point three. So you're beginning your discussion with a paragraph that simply summarizes the key results from your study. And then the subsequent paragraphs take each of those key points in turn and consider them in the context of the broader literature. Uh, once you're out of your key points, then you can start to think about uh, broader, broader topics. So P5 onwards is the um, broader literature again. Um, and then perhaps P6 is a conclusion, just to wrap things up. Um, and that, that can be quite important as well. So there's the old adage from uh, Anglican vicars who say that uh, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you it, and then I'm going to tell you what I've just told you. And to a certain extent, the abstract tells you what you're going to tell the reader. The paper itself tells you, tells, tells the reader about the study. And this final conclusion at the end uh, just recaps and tells the reader once more the, the key points to take away from the work. Um, so that's how I think about writing a report. Um, if you've got any comments, put them in the, uh, the comments box below. Uh, hope it's useful.